You're back, baby. Triple feature back here with a rapid fire of 2008. The top five films this time again. Again, delivering to you what you want to know. You're at home. You're like, what do I watch? I don't know what to watch. And I'm telling you what to watch. I'm saying, check these movies out. You will love them. And if you don't love them, you're a Nazi. All right. Number five. Number five is The Dark Knight. Now, this is Christopher Nolan. I... Again, this movie, uh, one, probably the best Batman movie that exists, Dark Knight. Um, it's only brought down a little bit by some other, some other weird stuff. I'm not a big fan of the ending with the whole boat thing and all that sort of stuff. People get all that. They're like, we're, the, we're overcoming the bad or something. I don't care about it. And this sort of that. But again, this, this has the Joker. And I think everybody pretty much agrees. It is the greatest acting job for the Joker. And one of the greatest acting jobs, I think, just of all time of having this sort of villain. It just takes the movie up so much. It's hard to explain. It's worth watching just for that. Number four, Syndicate New York. This movie with uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, yeah, it is a weird, weird, weird one. It's hard to explain. This guy's like building this thing and he's built his life and he's building really plays and people are playing people that are playing people and people and it just keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. It's a movie to immerse yourself in, and it has this feeling of this overwhelming sadness when you watch it. And you're gonna watch parts of I don't know what is happening in this part, but it makes you feel something. It's what it just absolutely does. Number three, Martyrs. Martyrs, again, maybe one of the greatest horror films of all time with Martyrs. That is, this movie is dark. It's almost like two different movies completely. It's brutal, it's super dark, and it is amazingly well made. There are some haters out there. I think like some people watch this and they get too active too much about how great it is, and they have some weird expectation. But I can't explain how great this film is. It it. After you watch it, you feel like you need to take a shower. Though. You're like, yeah, I just did that. Number two, one of the greatest comedies of all time, Pineapple Express with Seth Rogen. Man, oh. now you have to remember, the director of this movie went on to do Halloween 2018. He's done a lot of weird other sort of stuff. So this one's kind of an action comedy, if you want to say that. And it's also a stoner comedy. Now, I know James Franco, he's been canceled on and all that sort of stuff, okay? I have no comment about whether he did or didn't do whatever he did. Either way, he's hilarious in this movie. Hilarious. Can we not just forgive him if he's hilarious? I think if someone's funny, we should forgive them all of all sins. I think we can all agree. Number one movie of 2008, In Bruges. This movie, when I saw the trailer originally, I was like, this movie looks so stupid. I just wrote it off. And then all of a sudden, I saw it win the Golden Globe for Best uh, Comedy Musical. I was like, what? That movie, the movie that sucks with Colin Farrell? Why would anybody watch that? So I finally go, okay, well, I'll just check it out since that is. Wow. Wow. Again, it's a dark, dark comedy and there's action in it. And it just, it throws you for a loop. Don't be, if you've seen the trailer for this and you say that it looks dumb, don't listen to the trailer. Watch the actual movie. Watch it. When Colin Farrell goes midget and he wants forward, I knew I was like, we're dealing with genius right here. Rapid fire. I like that. No, ma'am, we're not. Plan on murdering me in my sleep. What? No. 